What's up ladies and gents? Welcome to another Payday 2 video. This is the Pert Debt Balance update. This is the web page. We're going to take a look at all the changes and you're going to get all of my first impressions. And I'm going to hopefully be able to uh, enlighten you guys on what these changes are and how they're going to change the sort of Payday meta game. Because Pert Decks are really cool within Payday. It's really important they add to the diversity of how the game plays out. But recently there's been a bit of stagnation because Rogue and Grinder are just so much better than everything else. Um, so... Rogue has been addressed in, in the tiniest way possible, and uh, Grinder has been rebalanced, not necessarily fully nerfed, though I do think in the long term it's going to be make it a weaker perk deck, it has just been altered in how it functions. But more importantly, I feel, some of the perk decks that had the most potential and were the most interesting sounding have been buffed to high heavens, and they look like a load of fun. Be aware this is uh, Wednesday, the, the day the update came out, so I've not had much time to uh, mess around with this at all. These are just my first impressions, and in the future you guys are going to see new videos talking about these perk decks, and most importantly, new build videos, because I think some of these may warrant some new builds. Um, finally, of course, it's Wednesday, so uh, I was just about to sit down and make Mask of the Week, and then out came an update on Wednesday, which is pretty unheard of. Thanks, Overkill. Really ruined my schedule there, but I'm going to bring you that Mask of the Day tomorrow instead, and today we're going to take a look at these perk decks. So, starting things off with Sociopath. One thing you'll notice throughout is this change of clarification. It's now been changed to when you are within medium as opposed to close as opposed to close range of an enemy. This has been changed throughout every perk deck and every uh, perk skill that did this throughout. So this this looks like a buff to wall. What I would really like Overkill to do is show us what medium, close, and far ranged look like. But um, sadly, all we know is it's medium, so we know it's a buff. Um, now, to me, medium would be the range at which sort of assault rifles are best, right? Assault rifles may be the extended range of submachine guns. Um, but one thing you can be assured of, if you're a shotgun user, you're basically always going to proc medium range if you're picking up kills. Um, unless you're using the Raven, because that has some weird range on it. Uh, that's the way I'm going to look at it, and so these perk decks look perfect for a sort of hybrid shotgun build potentially. Now Sociopath has some massive boost to it. You'll just immediately see from the get-go when you're within medium range of enemies you're getting an 8% damage resistance as opposed to 4. So we've just doubled that. Things only get better though because when it comes to the armor regeneration it's been increased from 10 to 30 and it can now occur every 2 as opposed to 3 seconds. A massive, massive buff. Um, it's triple the regeneration you were previously getting. Sadly, though, as far as armor regeneration has treated me in the past, especially with other skills um, like Bullseye within Fugitive, which has also got a little change, armor regeneration's never felt that effective. But this, this could be grinder level. Admittedly, it's not going to occur as frequently as grinder did. Um, grinder, of course, like I said, has been changed. Um, but two seconds... It seems pretty good, and if we look further on, there are more boons to armor we can get further down Sociopath. Next up, we've got Killing an Enemy with a Melee Weapon. Regenerates double the health, now 10%, and can occur every 2 seconds. I like this. I personally think the um, time between which it occurs, it barely needs to exist, because you can't kill people with exclusively with melee weapons in much faster than 2 seconds. So, this seems a bit arbitrary. But um, the 10% is a nice increase. It means you still, you know, you're still going to have to kill 3, 4, 5 enemies to get yourself up from medium to full. Um, and so it's not going to make those exclusive melee builds that much better. But what it will do is, if you're in a 1v1 in an easy situation and you've lost a bit of health previously, may as well pick the kill up with the melee weapon. It's going to reward you a little more and I like to see that sort of change. Bit of variety within playstyle. Next up, we've got another range-based perk within Overdose. The range has been increased to medium, as I said, and you now regenerate triple again. Triple the armor up to 30 and it can occur every two seconds, meaning every two seconds, if you're killing a guy within medium range, so if you're using a shotgun, <laughs> is what we're going to say, you're getting 60 armor back. That is not too shabby. Um, like I said, I don't think it's going to be grinder level, but it could be a load of fun. And it's certainly going to have the same sort of playstyle idea as grinder, making you keep chaining those kills together every two seconds. Really cool stuff. Um, finally, one last range-based perk within Showdown. 
And another massive buff. So it used to have a 20% chance to spread panic amongst enemies, causing a brief sort of stun. Um, not too dissimilar to ECM feedback. It used to occur up to every 3 seconds and only had a 20% chance to occur. Now it's 75, almost quadruple, and it's going to happen more frequently, and it has a chance to happen more frequently. This is just massive to show down. Now, I always find that the panic is a unreliable sort of perk. It doesn't seem to help all that frequently, but I'd say that was probably as a result of it only occurring every 1 in 5 times, whereas now it's... Now, every three and four times, that's that's not too bad. We'll have to see how powerful it is. Um, but it could be great. It could be great to have someone, even on Death Wish difficulty, bring this kind of disruption, being able to keep themselves topped up on armor on the front line. I'm going to have to see what builds are going to suit this best. Are we going to look for a sort of um, full tank build or more of a hybrid build with a bit of dodge in it. We'll see. It looks like we're going to be trying to use Sociopath to actually keep our combined tactical vest up at full armor. And, and that's the way I like to see it. Next up we have Gambler. The pretty unique, interesting uh, perk deck that Bonnie brought with it. That, um, well, it, it's odd. And it's been buffed. But I still don't expect too much for it from it. But what I do like about it is its potential to assist your team, which most perk decks don't do at all. Um, so, at max rank now, instead of healing you for up to 10 health every 15 seconds, it now heals for about 20 every 4 seconds, so another just ridiculously big buff. How could this come in at that level of healing? But the way I look at it, Grinder was healing you for so much more than that, so much faster. But what is awesome is you also heal your teammates for a hundred percent of the basically the same amount, which is great. Um, and it, it means while it's not viable on Death Wish really to keep your teammates topped up, and it's it's too hard to sort of ration out the ammo pickups on the floor and do it every four seconds. It's just impossible micromanagement that you don't want to deal with in payday. Um, but what's cool about this is, if you're playing on overkill, it's just going to be a nice ambient skill to keep you topped up and make the heist a little more relaxing for you and your team. And, and that I like. Not every perk deck has to be the absolute hero top perk deck. And that's what we have here with Gambler. Next up we have Kruk, a potential substitute for Rogue, it looks like. Uh, it always was, but it was always kind of the, uh, the evil twin. Now, Kruk was, of course, Hoxton's perk deck. And Subtle has been nerfed. So your chance to dodge is the decrease from 10% to 5. So there's a slight nerf to this perk deck, but that's actually a nerf to every single dodge perk deck. Subtle has just been cut. Clearly they realised that dodge was just a little too overpowered, and people just weren't using armour anymore. Uh, which, as I said, was a shame, and I like to see these small rebalances to make playstyles more varied, and playing online a more, more of an interesting experience. But for all the composure skills, basic, advanced, and expert, not only do you have the dodge up to 35%, which ain't too shabby, you also have roughly 65% armor increase on ballistic vests, meaning they're not bad protectors in the end. Um, of course, this is going to multiply. Uh, you can increase ballistic vests even further. I forget the name of the skill within Fugitive, the bottom uh, right-hand side. Uh, if the one that does steadiness, I don't know why I've completely blanked on the name of that skill, but you can further increase ballistic vests, the lightweight ballistics of course, and make yourselves, yourself pretty tanky and um, also dodging. So it's a nice little um, midpoint between full rogue and the armoured builds. I hope Crook works out well, and I do think that this may, with a bit of testing and a bit of trying out, be the best replacement for Rogue, and it may be a preferred option in the end. Now we have Crew Chief, which still looks pretty bad, sadly. Not much of a change. Not the world's worst perk deck in the first place, but it's so fiddly. In order to make any use out of it, you need hostages. Now, of course, with hostage situation, the health and stamina stacks up to 10 times. So 40% stamina is great, as is 20% health. Now, if you were to read this incorrectly, you might have read that you get an 8% damage reduction per hostage, up to 10, meaning 80% damage reduction, which would have been crazy for hostage maps. Sadly, you're actually just getting 8% for having a hostage. It's still a buff, but seems pretty arbitrary. 
I uh, I don't think it's going to change change Crew Chief very much at all. Next up, we have the Infiltrator, another pretty big set of changes over here. So we have with Close Combat the change to medium um, and of course an increase to the uh, damage resistance going up from 4 to 8, so a double. Um, and that's the same for all of them, meaning you're getting roughly tw nearly 25% um, damage reduction, which isn't bad just for being at medium range. Another great possibility if you're a shotgun user. Infiltrator of course also has the melee bonus. Um, for each melee hit you get an additional 10%. And this boost lasts for 7 seconds, now it can stack up to 4 times, meaning you have 40% more melee damage over 7 seconds. So not too shabby at all. I get why they gave another second, it was mainly, I feel, because some melee weapons swung so slowly and was so difficult to use, you never felt like you were getting that full 40% increase. Um, I personally would rather see it stay at 6 seconds and then the melee damage boost go up to 15. I think that would have made it a much uh, stronger skill. But don't forget, you, uh, you're you getting another 10% in Overdog as well, and th that same buff applies. So you're getting up to 20% more melee damage over 7 seconds. Um, sorry, 80%, I should say. So not too shabby at all. Strike an enemy with your melee weapon now rege uh, regenerates 20% of your health, but can only happen once every 10 seconds. Still probably going to be a bit too short. We'll see. 20% is pretty nice regeneration. Um, Infiltrator again, it, it's going to fit that exact same niche I feel that I said the uh, Sociopath will. In that it's, the dedicated melee builds just aren't going to work still, but it's going to incentivize the use of melee weapons, which is cool. Next up, we have Muscle. Small buff, uh, it's still not the best uh, perk deck out there, I don't feel. It's still not a bad one though, I've used it in the past. Um, it's one of the tank options, but armor has just got a straight buff as well, so you really have to uh, weigh this one up. The 4% regeneration you get every 5 seconds. Again, I like the addition of more ways to heal yourself with having to be uh, reliant on first aid meds, having to go into fugitive. It's cool, but it's not going to be all that useful for you, I don't feel. Um, but as we said, armor, more armor, much better perk deck now. Um, it's it's doubled the armor from 15 to 30 percent from the type 1, 2, and 3 armor. Nice to see, um, but is it going to make a massive difference? Maybe. Maybe on the absolute tank builds, you're going to feel it. Of course, the more armor you have initially, the more you're going to feel the armor boost, so that's the best way to use this perk deck. Next up, pretty complicated. The grinder changes, or nerf, I would say. So, all of these changes are very similar. I'm not going to run through them all. Um... It's a simple drop down of uh, healing value from 5, 4, 3 to 2, 3, 4, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so everyone's just got a unit knocked off it. However, the amount of time that you can heal for has been buffed by quite a few seconds. I knew one take was too good to be true. I had to go get a drink, my throat was all drying up. As I was saying... The amount of time that you're healing for has been increased, which means that you can use the slower shooting weapons, the snipers, to get the grinder potential. However, the weapons that you had to use to, to make good use out of grinder previously, the fast shooting SMGs assault rifles, um, they are no longer giving you the same benefit in the long run. They're not giving you as great a benefit, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So it's a nice little bit of balancing. Though Grinder was all about those fast shooters. You know, the Vector came out and it was like, well, here we go. Here's the weapon for Grinder, this stupid fast fire rate SMG. Um, and either that that was what was, you know, quite exciting about it. And then all the names of the uh, perk deck make sense. You know, Adrenaline, Endorphins, Dopamine, Euphoria. That's what it was all about. It's moved a bit away from that, but it's still, you know, balancing. And I do think Grinder was slightly too strong. I personally believe that this reduction in the overall healing amount, so the amount you can actually heal by from single shots, is going to mean that you're not getting as strong an immediate heal. So Death Wish, it's going to make this perk deck really not viable. Already, I feel like Grinder was potentially a worse option than Rogue on Death Wish. It was so hard to keep yourself topped up. You really had to have a perfect build and play the, the, the perk deck style perfectly yourself. Um, 
So with, with these nerfs, it means that Death Wish, you're just going to take on too much damage to heal up. You may want to, if you enjoy the grinder style, have to try out one of these armor regeneration perk decks, or go back to the tried and true rogue, or potentially these big tanky builds with something like armorer may be the way to go from now on. Anyway, let's move on from Grinder. I know it was probably the perk deck most of you were, were interested in seeing how they balanced. Instead, let's talk about Rogue. For the longest time, my favorite perk deck, and it's just got a small, small nerf in the loss of 5% uh, of Subtle's dodge chance. Really won't make a huge difference. Still going to be a great option. Um, I don't think this should influence your choice in putting on this perk at all. Um, yeah, just, just a 5% loss. Okay, finally, let's talk about the changes to skills, because Bullseye and Hostage Taker have both been changed again, and it always feels this way. Hostage Taker's always being changed around, because the skill isn't used, no one uses it, it's not worth enough. Um, so these are the skills that should be used, but they're never changed enough to become viable, just because at their heart, in their premise, they're too difficult to make good use of. Bullseye, though, could be interesting. Um, it's a very long way up Fugitive, it's not easy to pick up at all, and if you're going up Fugitive, you're basically going for dodge, crit, um, potentially a Kimbo weaponry, and Bullseye really falls short, you know, there are, there's Swan Song up there as well, I, I imagine most people don't even notice this skill exists, but it's not all that bad, I've used it in the past, and while it's not amazing, it was the sort of... Um, the regeneration before Grinder existed, and it was still fun to use, but now there's been a massive buff. So you're now regenerating up to 45 armor per headshot every two seconds, which isn't too bad, especially if you're playing Payday the way you should, because Payday's all about those headshots, it's all about those multipliers. So I'm, I'm starting to feel like this skill could be perfect with some sniper builds, maybe the WA-2000, something with the fire rate where you're going to be shooting, you know, maybe two, three bullets every two seconds, and you're going to be hitting those heads as consistently as possible. But other great options, I would say, put fitting this into a pistol build, an SMG build, just aim for that head, and you're undoubtedly going to regenerate a load of armor. Now, what I think is, is an obvious um, thing to mention is that this gives you 45 per headshot every two seconds, and all the way up here with Sociopath, we're going to be getting 60 every two seconds per kill. So if we're killing and getting a headshot in that duration, um, we're going to be getting 105 armor back every two seconds. Not bad at all. Problem is, you've got no dodge, you're going to be taking an awful lot of damage at the same time. Is it going to be sustainable? That's going to be all based around your playstyle. How good you are, you know, you've got to be hitting those heads, you've got to be taking cover um, and, and coming from the right angles at enemies especially on the Death Wish difficulty, which we're talking about, but it might work. And I can't wait to try and get a build out there utilizing both Bullseye and the changes made to Sociopath. Uh, it will be coming soon. Finally, though, Hostage Taker. I've already said it doesn't feel worth it, despite big buffs again. Um, the regeneration, just one hostage. It's going to give you 6% every 5 seconds. That's not that bad, but, you know, we just got... We just got this in uh, Muscle. I need to scroll past it. Here it is. Muscle. Yeah, we, we just got 4% without having to do anything. You just have to put this perk deck on. So I still don't see that skill ever being viable and being worth your consideration, really. There are some fun builds that make use of them, but no, I, I recommend straying far away from that one and instead taking a look at uh, a bullseye. See if you've got some skip, uh, spare skill points to go in there because that could be a load of fun. So... I like the changes. I think overall, balance has been acquired. you got to wonder, you know, where are the changes to Hitman? What's going on there? We think that's balance, do we? But, uh, oh well, we can't, we can't ask for the world. Overkill certainly delivered on a nice little balance patch here with some new fun things to mess around with. And um, hopefully Grinder will still be fun for those of you who enjoy it. I don't think the nerf's going to be killer. I just think it's going it, to... It's accentuated the perk decks or weaknesses, that, which was Death Wish, really. Um, of course, all of these are going to be viable up to overkill, so they should all be fun to mess around with. That's it for this update video. I hope you have enjoyed. I hope you've enjoyed my first thoughts. Just interrupting my own outro as you do to let you guys know that the information for Payday Con in Seattle, taking place on the 28th of August, PAX Prime, I believe, 
um, is out. I'm going to link the website down below, of course, also with the uh, patch notes and update from the uh, the perk deck update. Now, I don't know an awful lot about this event. As far as I know, there's going to be some good personalities there. Dallas, Chains, uh, Simon Vickland, of course, after just announcing that he's leaving Overkill. Um, who else? Almir will be there. I believe Andreas will be there. And uh, the guy who plays Vlad as well. Um, so, you know, pretty star-studded. I know, oh, as far as I know, no one from the YouTube side of things is going to be there. But um, hopefully those of you who are in the area or can go will enjoy this. They call it a free event, which it is. I think maybe they should be uh, paying a little more heed to the old hype train that got this whole thing going. But there we go, guys. If you're interested, the link is in the description below. I hope you've enjoyed this video. See you all in the next one.